Okay, I did forget a piece. I knew there was something else. The piece I forgot was, what about wind? How does wind factor into this? Because that definitely changes where the ball is going to go and whether or not it makes it out of the, hits, Mickey Mantle can hit it out of the park. So how do you deal with wind in this? So the key is, when we wrote up this equation at the start of all that other stuff, we assumed no wind and this speed here was the speed of the ball. That's what it is. And notice the speed of the ball in those three dimensions is, I'm going to say this the right way, I hope. Here we go. This is, since it's the speed of the ball from the ground's perspective and there's no wind, it is also the relative speed of the ball to the wind. So what this is, these speeds are, are the ball's speed from the wind's, and I'll say air's, perspective. And if there's no wind at all, it is ground speed also. So notice these x's and these x's, these speeds and accelerations, are all from the perspective of ground. But as soon as you introduce wind, that speed from the air's perspective changes. So we have to take that into account. Now if you're in the Advanced Dynamics for Engineers, I just put together a video about relative speed. So if you want to watch that, you can, you can click over to that page on my website and you can see that video. But I'll just put the equation up for now. The speed of one object from another object's perspective is equal to the speed of the first object from the Earth's perspective minus the speed of the second object from the Earth's perspective. So the question is, in all relative motion problems, you've got three items. Moving object A, moving object B, and the thing that's not moving, which we designate as E for Earth. Because the Earth, we just, we, I mean, we say it doesn't move. I mean, if we were standing on Jupiter, we'd say Earth is moving. But since we're standing on Earth, we say Earth doesn't move. So, uh, moving object A, moving object B, and the Earth. These are our three objects. And that's the generalized equation. And, and this is a vector. It works in all three dimensions. What are our three objects for baseball? Well, our three objects are ball and air. And what do we want here? We want the ball's speed from the air's perspective. So what we want here is, uh, and maybe we should, yeah, well that works. The speed of the ball from the air's perspective. Ball, air. So notice we just flip our A's and B's up here and that'll give us the right equation. So this is going to become the velocity of the ball from the Earth's perspective, vector, minus the velocity of the ball of the air from the Earth's perspective. So the velocity of the air from the Earth's perspective, that's wind. You get that from the Weather Channel. You go online, type in weather underground or weather.com, whatever you get your weather, I don't care. But that's where you get, you get the air speed. What does that mean? That's the speed of the air from the Earth's perspective. As, as, the, as the wind sock is planted in the ground and the wind sock sticks out this far and blows in that direction, it gives you the speed of the air from the ground's perspective. And this, that's our R dot. That's the speed of the ball. which is what we assumed over here. If there is no air speed, then this equals this, the speed of the ball from the air's perspective. As soon as you have wind, you've got to include that in there also. So, how is that going to change this equation? Well, it's going to change it so it looks like this. Some of the forces, we're still going to have 0, 0, minus mg. That force doesn't change. Wind doesn't change gravity, okay? We're still going to have minus m gamma out front. That's not going to change. We're still going to have ground speed, ground, ground speed in all three dimensions. But we're going to have to subtract off 
this piece, wind. So we're going to have V wind X, V wind Y, and V wind Z. <laughs> Usually there's not much of an updraft, but sometimes there is. So basically, what we need here in this equation is the relative speed of the ball from the air's perspective. And the way you do that is using the relative velocity equation. So you have to subtract off the wind. And so then this is going to still be equal to m x double dot y double dot z double dot. And now you solve those three differential equations, second order differential equations again. That means you've got six differential equations to solve here, and they're more complex than the ones we just did. But it can be done, because these are just constants. So there you go. That's how you'd factor in wind. OK, now we're really done for the day. Well, at least I send out the next video.